Only a few of us reached the replication complex. The worst of Rasputin's defences had already blanketed this entire area. Frames. Constructs. Some things I haven't seen before, nor since. They felt no pain, no fear. Welcome back Guardians. Today I want to talk about the Seven Seraphs. With the announcement of Season of the Worthy, a bunch of activities, armor, and descriptions use the word Seraph. The Seraph Towers, which are apparently part of Rasputin's defenses, the Seraph Bunkers, which appear to have been taken by the Fallen, and the Seventh Seraph Armor Set. For those of you who have been playing Destiny since Destiny 1, you will know that the Seven Seraphs have been around since the pre-alpha phase of Destiny, but never expanded upon in the game. So in today's video, I want to explain everything we know about the Seven Seraphs and make some predictions for Season of the Worthy. As usual, the artwork at the beginning of this video was by Gamma Trap. All Patreon donations go towards paying Gamma Trap for his artwork. A link to Patreon will be below. If you are new to Destiny lore, check out my channel homepage. My last two videos was on Rasputin and the 50 Mysteries of Destiny, where I explained previously unanswered questions from Destiny 1. This is Marlin Games, and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Let's start at the beginning. The first hint of the Seven Seraphs came from the pre-alpha phase of Destiny, where the Seven Seraphs was meant to be a faction alongside New Monarchy, Dead Orbit, Future War Cult, and Osiris. Of course, as you know, the Seven Seraphs never became a faction in-game. The Seven Seraphs then reappeared when Bungie's lead world artist for Destiny, Rob Adams, mentioned them in a 2015 Bungie ride-along in the Cosmodrome. It was said that the Seven Seraphs was a program overseen by the Cosmodrome's higher-ups, who determined where to construct Rasputin's bunker. Now what is extremely interesting about this statement is that there is in fact a secret room in the Seraphim Vault from Destiny 1. I actually didn't know about this until I started researching this topic. I saw this vault on Evade's video from a couple years ago, and essentially in this Warmind vault there is a room with seven chairs that seem to be connected to Rasputin's core. This obviously seems heavily inspired by those original comments made by Rob Adams, that the seven seraphs were the higher ups who determined where to construct Rasputin's bunker. Now you can't help but think that these chairs look like they allow whoever sits in them to connect with Rasputin's core or his network. Part of me thinks that this is a remnant of the original Rasputin story that Rob Adams mentioned. In Destiny 1 they hinted at Clovis Bray wanting to live forever, and we knew that Clovis Bray the corporation helped to create Rasputin. We also could name six Clovis Bray family members, one short of seven. And I always had the general impression that there was going to be seven brave family members, i.e. the higher-ups, who helped create Rasputin. Of course, we now know that Rasputin has a different creation story, and to our best knowledge, his early programming came from the Ares 1 mission, and then he was further programmed by Anna Bray. See my Everything You Need to Know About Rasputin video for more details. But in regards to those seven seats in the bunker, alternatively, maybe these represented Rasputin empowering seven beings, creating these seven seraphs. The real world definition of seraphs is seraphs are celestial beings, variants of angels, and they surround God's throne. What if Rasputin created some super soldiers known as the seven seraphs? Of course, this would be an amazing fit for the new video trailer that revealed these mech-like beings that appeared to be Rasputin's defenses. My guess is that these mech-like beings are the defenses that Saladin encountered when trying to access Siva. He referred to them as frames or constructs. During the Rise of Iron campaign, Saladin tells the story of how the Iron Lords were destroyed when trying to harness Siva from Rasputin. He says this, only a few of us reached the replication complex. The worst of Rasputin's defenses had already blanketed this entire area. Frames. Constructs. Some things I haven't seen before nor since. They felt no pain, no fear. Of course, this is complete speculation, but imagine if these frames or constructs are the seven seraphs. Rasputin's personal super soldiers. It would make sense for Rasputin to consider himself a god and these frames to be his archangels. 
The other speculation I have about the Seven Seraphs also originates from Destiny 1 where they hinted at multiple war mines and that maybe there was seven war mines. The season of Warmind changed this lore slightly, with Rasputin being the only and main Warmind, and with the others being sub-mines under his control. However, what is really interesting is that the new artifact for Season of the Worthy is called Warmind Kanjali. This appears to be another Warmind. Back in Destiny 1, we also knew of Charlemagne, which had been mentioned in Rasputin Grimmel cards. And very recently, in Season of Dawn, there was a lore entry that referred to multiple war mines. It reads, A war mind fired that weapon. War mines don't take human life, unless they're in the Twilight Exigent Moral Territory. I'm starting to wonder if Bungie are revisiting the idea of multiple war mines, or if war mines and sub mines are linked to the Seven Seraphs. Okay, let's lay off the speculation for a moment and look at what else is actually said in game. Now whilst the seven seraphs are not mentioned in the lore, the word seraph and similar words are. The Iron Lord Timur actually hinted at this to Lord Felwinter. Timur was the one to discover Siva, which ultimately led to the Iron Lords and the ill-fated plan. The Lord Timur lore entry reads, You seem far too obsessed with these war mines. Timur stops and stares into the horizon as if smelling something. Not danger, discovery. He draws his fellow Iron Lord close. Tell me, Felwinter, he whispers. What does the word Seraph mean to you? Felwinter leans in to whisper back. Old Earth theology? I know its power well. One can make great use of the traps of faith and its myths. So in this scene, Felwinter and Timmer are tracking down a Clovisbray institution to find Siva, and Timmer asks Felwinter about Seraph. Felwinter uses the literal definition of seraph, i.e. angel, relating to old earth theology. Of course, we suspect Timur is talking about Rasputin's version of seraph. Seraph would also appear in the lore in the material Seraphite on Mars. The material description of Seraphite reads, Native Martian relic iron that has been suffused with resonant seraph energy. Bring this to Anna Bray to discover its value. This idea of Seraph being an energy is also reinforced by the Akelos weapons which have Seraph rounds. So how can we use this information to speculate on the Seven Seraphs? Considering Seraphite contained Seraph energy, did the Seven Seraphs use this energy to create Rasputin? Was this energy used to build Rasputin by the Seven Seraphs? Or, like our previous theory, is it the other way around? has Rasputin empowered his defences with Seraph energy. Now considering we have to activate Rasputin's defences in Season of the Worthy, and some of those defences are known as Seraph Towers, it is likely that this theme of Seraph being an energy that can be harnessed as a weapon will continue during the season. The best part about the Season of the Worthy reveal is that the new armour is called the Seventh Seraph. Not Seven Seraphs, but the Seventh as in the final member of the Seraphs. I really hope that this confirms we will get some lore about the Seven Seraphs, and potentially the significance of the final member, the Seventh. And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the word Seraph to represent the Seven Seraphs. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.